Hello everyone, uh, I'm the Deaf Pom, first name's Scott. Um, hopefully Dave chooses this video for his guest spots whilst he's away on holiday. And uh, I thought I'd just tell a bit, a bit about me and on my channel and what I do. Um, this unit here is one of the things I'm working on currently. I do a lot of repair videos, mostly on test equipment. Um, I do do some uh, review, reviews as well on new gear. Like I've done some reviews of Siglent in the past. Um, you may have seen those. Um, also anything that's sent to me as well. Like I do mailbag videos, things I've purchased and, and so on. I also do uh, CB repair work and I've done a little bit of videos on that. Um, but mostly, mostly what I do these days is uh, test equipment repairs. So if you're interested in you know, seeing me fixing test equipment stuff then carry on watching um, and check out my channel. So this is one a piece of gear I'm working on right now and um, I've had this in my position for quite some time now, for a few months. And it's been a bit of a pain. I think every single board in it has had a fault. Every board is faulty. Uh, I think it's a parts unit, which has been used for good parts for other ones. Um, this is a Fluke 5200A AC voltage calibrator. Um, and I'm working through the repairs on this. And I'm just gonna go through and show you um, a bit on troubleshooting at the moment and just doing some diagnostic work. So it's gonna be a little bit technical, but not overly so I'm not a hugely technical person I'm very much you know out there and unplanned videos I'll just sit here and just speak and go through it I don't have a script or anything like that so hopefully you don't mind me following my words a little bit things like that so it's what I'm working on and um, I've been working through the cards I've already got two cards repaired but I'm still doing some more diagnostic work um, I've already got a power supply I've already repaired all that and done some substitutions and so on um, so I was going to show you about this if you want to see more about this particular repair um, I've got a series on my channel of repair so far up to date um, and there will be more as well as I progress through it um, but hopefully this is a little sample of, of you know what you might get to see if you come to my channel and have a look and uh, hopefully subscribe and so on so hopefully Dave chooses me otherwise it will never see the light of day <laughs> okay so to start off with I should explain what's going on here now this board here is the oscillator and it isn't oscillating Right, so what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to have a phase uh, change as it goes through each amplifier stage on this board. It's supposed to go 308 degrees on the first stage, 90 degrees and 90 degrees again to get 360 degrees or thereabouts, um, which is then controlled electronically by the control board, oscillator control card, um, which then fine tunes our frequency and allows for any changes on the front panel controls and so on. Um, that's the theory. <laughs> All right but the oscillator doesn't work. So what I'm actually doing is injecting my own oscillator signal into the unit um, at the input, which is then passing through the stages and then I can actually test each stage that way with an artificial injection of a, of a signal, um, which at least proves that each stage is working. I've done this previously in, a, in another part of the video, um, another section I've done, which showed the gain of each amplifier, which is about 40 times gain. Um, so those are actually working, you know, at least I know as far as amplification goes, but not as far as phase. Um, and that's where I'm thinking the issue is now why it's not oscillating is because if the phase is wrong, then it won't oscillate because it's out of phase with itself and so it doesn't generate an oscillation. Um, but it's quite a complicated little setup they've got going on here. Um, it goes across two different cards, which is influenced by a third card which is fed by my fourth card <laughs> so it's a case of eliminating which part is causing um, the problems and, and trying to prove which bits work which which, which bits don't um, so it's a, it's a pain and um, it's been a long process so hopefully this video is a little bit interesting for you um, I doubt I'm going to actually achieve anything in this video I'm be, I, I don't think I'm going to fix anything today because it's, it's a lot to go through and um, but hopefully you find it interesting all right so I've got my uh, test set up here now I'm using the new SDS 1104 XE scope which I've been reviewing recently and um, it's playing around with it still because it's four channels and it's convenient and um, I've got this hooked up onto the oscillator uh, control board well oscillator board sorry and what I'm trying to measure here is the phase in between each oscillator stage. Um, it's supposed to change phase as it goes through. Now actually you're having a bit of trouble measuring the first stage um, between the input and the, and the output of the first stage 
Um, so I'm going to have to probably come back to that bit. For now, I can move on this test the other stages and see if they look right. Okay, so let's move the camera down and I'll show you what I've found so far. Okay, so I've teed off on the inputs and stuff on this card now, so I can actually measure the phases on each stage. So this is the input for my oscillator. This is the output of the first stage, output of the second stage, output of the third stage, right? So you should be able to see the phasing from each one. Now, if I zoom in slightly, you should be able to see it a little bit better. Um, so you can see phase one to two is almost 90 degrees. Depends with the frequency as well. So if I actually adjust the frequency on the fluke, um, these phases will change slightly. Now, to say 89 degrees, phase between two and three should is actually minus 87. So it's actually 270 degrees out in theory, but actually it's almost in phase with the first one. Um, three to four, I oh, sorry, two to two to three is those two. So phase 3 is actually in phase with the first one pretty much and phase 4 is out by 90 degrees right so phase 4 is actually 270 degrees now it says minus 86 because obviously it thinks it's going around but the issue here is that this first difference here between the input and the output of the first stage is supposed to be a 180 degree phase difference not 90 degrees according to the manual so that's probably why it doesn't work properly <laughs> all right so i've tested each stage and each stage is amplifying and doing the things it's supposed to do but that's why i wanted to come and check the phases because um if this isn't right then it throws the whole thing out so say this first stage here is supposed to be 180 degrees it's supposed to invert the input it's not doing that. Um, so I find that quite interesting. Um, and these other two stages are supposed to be 90 degrees out from each other. So what I've got here is 90 degrees, 270 degrees, and it's like 270 again, effectively. But it's, yeah. it's not doing what you think it should do. So, yeah, it's a bit of a pain. Um, I need to investigate this first bit here because it's supposed to be inverting the input. That's what's supposed to happen. Okay, so this is the uh, circuit diagram for the uh, oscillator board. Now, these phases I'm looking at on the scope. Now, this is the input here, TP2. I'm measuring a TP3 for channel 2. And TP5 for channel 3. And TP7 for channel 4. So this first stage here is supposed to be 180 degree inversion and then this stage here is supposed to be 90 degree inversion this is supposed to be 90 degree inversion so well face, diff face change um, and that's not what's happening this phase here with well, this stage here is not doing 180 degrees it's only doing 90. Now this has some other aspects along with it um, there's a summing amplifier out here which is in parallel with the device summing amplifier in, summing amplifier out, they go to the um, oscillator control board and um, it gets a bit more complicated certainly but they actually have a capacitor across it which is used to tune this response um, there's also that oscillator zero here. Um, I've tried adjusting that; it doesn't seem to change anything. But um, so let's just look at the summing amplifier out and summing amplifier in. Let's see what those do. Um, those are on the control BCB, which is here. Now they. Um, are here, summing amplifier in over here and summing amplifier out. So those pass through. Now this is going through this network here um, which goes back into here and into here, to this, this box. Alright, so let's go back down to the next page and this is that box. 
Sewing amplifier in is here, and sewing amplifier out is where. It's also labelled as H, so I should look for that too, shouldn't I? Um, H, there we go, there. All right, so oscillator control in is is a level control. All right, so um, I did find some faults. I think I replaced some capacitors somewhere in this part of the circuit. Where was it? Over here, I think I replaced these caps here. I think it was. So there was an issue with this particular board, and this I'm suspicious of this circuit here. I think something in here isn't right. Um, so this is supposed to come uh, out of this device here, go to the amplifier, feed through the amplifier, come back and go across this stuff here. So it's all amplifying DC amps and stuff here as well. So this is supposed to be um, providing some amplification and it's probably affecting the oscillator. Now there's other stuff here to consider too. Now we've got these various capacitors which are being switched in as well by these relays. But these are part of the quadrature amplifier and the oscillator amplifier. Those seem to be working okay. Those look about right. So I'm pretty confident these capacitors here are working okay and that all these relays here are working okay as well. Um, I've done individual testing but everything um, and I've actually eliminated the phase lock circuit by not having it turned on. It disables that part of the circuitry. So um, just trying to figure out exactly which part is causing problems now, which I believe is in this amplitude control circuit here. Um, because it doesn't seem to be doing the right thing. It's a bit of a tricky process because it's sort of one big loop and um, it's it's a bit of a pain. Now there's actually a bit in the, in the diagnostics here somewhere. So I can find it. Um, theory of operation, functional block diagram. Is it here somewhere? Here we go. This is it. All right. So what I was actually hoping to try today was to try and do a bit of a shortcut here. Now. The oscillator assembly I know does oscillate. Now this is, so you get, this shows us phase shifts, 180 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay, so that isn't phase shifting like it should be, but that is controlled by this summing amplifier in. All right, it's from the oscillator control assembly. So um, this may or may not be working correctly, but is that because there's no amplifier control from here? Now I've actually measured this test point here to. Uh, to Connection 51, pin 51 on the card, and that is reading zero volts. So, and it's supposed to be between minus 15 volts and zero volts. So, if it, zero volts to me says it's fully out of one range. So, and that's without the amplifier installed because that's blown. <laughs> All right, so uh, everything's blown. Reference assembly is fixed. I've already repaired this, and I'm. I'm 99% sure this card is, is good now. Um, but uh, I did actually want to originally inject my own voltage here in pin 51. But I had some other complications going on um, with the way it ties the reference voltages together because it uses the reference power supply which is linked to the AC-DC converter through this cable here um, which has a negative reference which then gives the correct power supply outputs from the main power supply because it checks the reference voltage first and it's all tied together that way. So it's a bit complicated and involved. I may still go that route yet though. So I actually want to inject a negative voltage here and see if it corrects the frequency here. Um, it probably won't. It's supposed to be for amplitude control. But if this is completely skewed off, it may be trying to do something else. Um, so the phase lock circuit, when it's turned off, it disables. All this isn't used, so that's not used. Any of this isn't used. That doesn't matter. All, right, all this stuff doesn't matter. So it, it eliminates a whole bunch of circuitry. Um, so 
all it's really doing here is looking at this roll off here and this this tuning here all right so 360 degree tuning that capacitor there could be bad right c56 for example um the range selections work so uh yeah this this unit's been a bit of a pain so it's been a long journey all right so it looks like i've had a bit of success with this i'll just try changing some adjustments on the oscillator control board um on the off chance that they're just completely out of whack because someone's been playing with them and i'll turn them a little bit and i guess the oscillation got really unstable with my um my own supplied oscillator signal it was jumping all over the place and that's interesting as though there's conflicts between oscillations so I removed my my injected signal and um, I now have an oscillation going on here um, and that is from the oscillator board so the oscillator board is now oscillating and if I change ranges then it does all its range changes just fine okay let's bring this up a bit so there we go it's one megahertz give or take a little bit all right and um, so yeah that's doing everything it's supposed to do now let's bring it back down Obviously, I've got channel one connected right now. Uh, so that's on 1.1. So I put it down to 100. So yeah, roughly 100 hertz. It's slightly off frequency, but I'll have to figure out how I tune the frequency itself. But um, it's working now. The oscillator board is actually oscillating. So it looks like it's due to incorrect adjustments on the oscillator control board. So um, I don't actually know what adjustments do. I haven't gone through that procedure of, of calibrating that board yet. But um, where those adjustments are right now, it makes this board oscillate. So at least now I know this board can oscillate. <sighs> fun, fun, fun. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. And um, I think that's probably a good enough example for the sort of things I do. Um, don't forget, this is all sort of thrown together in a little bit of a rush because I've only got like a day to get this video into Dave. So, yeah, I've been on holiday and stuff like that. So, yeah. So now I can be sure that that board is actually capable of doing what it's supposed to do. It is oscillating at roughly the right frequencies. So I'm confident that that can do it. It's probably an issue on the control board itself. Um, so we'll have to work through that one in a different video. But um, hopefully, you get an idea of what I'll do and um, the repair and playing around so this scope here is um, a loner from Siglent um, for I've done a review on this on a scope a usage review and um, I'm just playing around with it for this you know because it's convenient to set up right here my own scope's at the back there uh, but uh, right so don't forget to pop by my channel if you get a chance and have a look and if you're interested in following the repair process on this um, and what I actually do to finally calibrate this properly because it's got some adjustments on here I don't know what I do yet I've got to go through all that but uh, I've got the full manual I just need to uh, go through the process now I've confirmed that the ball can actually oscillate by itself that's the biggest step because I've been trying to get this to work to some degree for a couple of weeks now off and on you know just trying bits and pieces but uh, I'm pretty confident that but that ball there is okay now so one more down Thanks, Dave, for the opportunity, and catch you later.